Happy Friday everyone, I'm Julian and this is Libby and this is Favourite Game Friday. So today's topic, we're talking about favourite two player games. Valentine's Day is coming up, so what games should you play with your beloved? Well, of course, everyone who watches the channel knows that our favourite two-player game is probably Rebellion. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that has more Christmassy vibes for us because we always play it Boxing Day. Although we do get it out more often throughout the year as well to get stay in with the rules. Um, most Valentine-y one I think we would play would be Patchwork Valentine's is the edition we have. So we do make a point of getting that one out for Valentine's Day. But... Another two-player specific game that I love is Paris, and I like to play it with the Eiffel expansion. I love how it's sort of a game of two halves. You're sort of starting by placing out your cobblestones and sort of trying to work out what building shapes you're going to be able to put on. There's lots of different polyomino shapes to be able to place in the latter stage of the game. Um, and so you, you're either placing the cobblestone or you're sort of nabbing a building in the first round and then the second round you're either placing your building where you've sort of pre-thought about where everything's going to go in your mind because any buildings not placed at the end are going to give you minus points or you're nabbing one of the postcards which gives you special powers, different buildings, lets you switch and swap things around and really helps get you out of a hole that you've most likely got yourself into in the first round. Um, particularly because some of the cobblestones are the purple colour, so they're neither player colour, you're either playing blue or orange. And both of you can place on purple, which means that you kind of allocate a space in your head thinking, yeah, I'll put that tile there and that one can go across there and then all of a sudden your opponent comes in and puts a building down exactly where you think you're going to have put yours down and then there's no other space on the board for that specific building <laughs> to be placed so it can be quite cutthroat but because you've got these lovely special powers with the different postcards you can add a lamp somewhere or you can swap your building with any that are remaining in the pool that you might now be able to place to sort of be able to claw back from that or there is even a postcard which lets you not get minus points for the buildings that you haven't managed to place. One thing I like about adding in the uh, Paris Eiffel expansion is that it adds a lot more of the postcards and powers that you get within that so there's more variability within that um, and they can be a little bit more dicey with a two player a little bit more aggressive um, one that I particularly like is the Arc de Triomphe which allows you to sort of skip over one of your opponent's spaces and connect your buildings together which is great the Eiffel Tower itself is shedding extra light around um, giving extra powers that way and there's some things like catacombs and bits and bobs so lots of extra powers and extra variability and it's a nice two player yes, another, really thinky another beauty from De Vere. it looks great on the yeah table. if you like polyomino games I would recommend having a little look into that one well, we recently had a two player night at our local board game club where everyone bought a selection of two player games and we did like a speed dating type thing where everyone <laughs> moved around the tables and I took I took lots of two player games to pick mm -hmm. from uh, so I had I had I had Paris, I had Kahuna, I had Lost Cities, I had Aquiline, uh, I had Aquiline, Sprawlopolis, uh, Tussie Mussie, ideal for this time of mm -hmm. year, you know, to get the romance flowing. Uh, but the game everyone wanted to play when they came around to have their moment with me was The Rocketeer. Now, I don't know if that's because this is actually really tricky to get in the UK. Mm -hmm. It's not being released over here, so you have to import it from Europe or import it from America. We were really lucky uh, that a friend on a Discord group was willing to give this to us while we're in America. It's very kind. Um, so we were pleased to have our own copy. So I don't know if that was the reason people were keen to play it, just because it was inaccessible normally, uh, or just because it's actually a, a really good game, a really good two-player game. Yes, yeah. So this is two-player only, um, and it's recreating that popular 90s film that has this bizarre cult following because <laughs> it's superb. Um, don't watch it, it might disappoint the uh, most, most tinted <laughs> illusion you have of it. But anyway, you're playing either as the goodies or as the baddies. So you're playing as the Rocketeer and Jenny and Peavy, if you're on the force of goodness, with the rocket pack mm. uh, up against that evil Sinclair and his cronies. Um, and it's, it's quite a simple game, really. You're moving people in accordance with the cards you've been dealt. You've got seven cards and you allocate the cards as you see fit. But ultimately, one set of players has got the blueprints for the rocket pack. And the opponent wants to get hold of those because whoever they has... Absolutely they, do. they need to do that. Because whoever has the rocket pack at the end of a round is getting um, finale card victory points. 
Um, so there's an element of kind of trying to deceive where you're going to put it, defending that rocket pack but not trying to look like you're defending it. And meanwhile, you, you're you're taking on your opponents, you're trying to take them down because essentially it's a, it's a kind of mini area control game. And it's playable in about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, I played three games of this in an evening in a, in a space of sort of two hours teaching new people how to play it so it's very quick to play and everyone I played with it really enjoyed it mm -hmm. and he's a kind of hardened game as you play a lot of games so yeah there's a lot to enjoy in this, in yeah. this game um, I'm, I, I'm really... I think that if you have liked and played Villainous it has uh, we always play that at two players so maybe that's partly why I compare them but there's there's different things going on and you know you don't have the fake deck in the same mm. way but I think that if you like that style of game then the, yeah, there's, similar vibe there's a to similar it, yeah. vibe of, of how it plays um, and it gives it's different enough that you would also want this but it's worth looking into yeah. for sure and I've got a soft spot for this because it's based in Hollywood mm -hmm. which is always nice for me but what two player games do you think you should be playing at either for Valentine's Day Fog of Love for example is a great mm. two player game you can play at this time of year uh, or just throughout the year what two player games would you suggest we look into next and uh, if you enjoy this video and you're new to us please do subscribe and bring that bell so you get to know whenever we have new videos coming up which is often two to three a week all about board games yeah, so you'll see us next week when we're talking about another favorite game on friday bye